Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at series of examples that deals with casualty and theft losses. These topics give students a little bit of confusion, so I will try to clarify it through these series of examples. Under the given circumstances, analyze how a loss on rental property should be handled. So we have some sort of a rental property, a building with a basis of 660,000. The fair market value before the loss for that building was 820. The fair market value after the loss is 220. Simply put, there was some sort of a casualty loss on this. A tornado, a flood, it doesn't really matter. How do we compute the loss? Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to choose the lower of the basis, which is 660, and the reduction in fair market value. Well, the property went from 820,000 to 220,000. There's a reduction of 600,000. Which of the two we are going to choose? 600,000. Can we take this deduction? And the answer is yes. This is a rental property. And this is a deduction for AGI. Let's go ahead and look at example two. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Emily in 20X2, she was in a car accident. She was totally safe. Her car was used for personal purposes, had a fair market value of 320 and adjusted basis of 16. Unfortunately, the car was completely destroyed. Emily received an insurance payout of 10,000. Emily's adjusted gross income was 40,000. What would be Emily casualty loss deduction considering any limitation? Well, what do we have to do? We have to choose between the lower of the basis or the reduction in fair market value. The fair market value reduction went from 32,000. The car was completely destroyed, went down to zero. The lower of these two is 16,000. We choose the 16,000. Then we will deduct from the 16,000 potential loss $10,000 in insurance. Losses that's left 6,000. 6, now bear in mind, this is a what? This is a personal use. Therefore, we have to deduct $100 by the IRS as a floor. What's left is 5,900. Is this the loss? No. Then we have to compute 10% of, of our AGI. Her AGI adjusted gross income is 40,000. 10% of that is 4,000. So her loss is 1,900, which is the excess amount over the 4,000. So her loss is 5,900. An excess of 4,000, what's left is 1,900. Not used. This loss, basically we did all this calculation. We cannot take this loss between 2018 and 2025 unless this is a federally declared disaster area. Now, starting in 2026, well, she will take this loss from... AGI, not for AGI, from AGI. Let's take a look at this third example. In the current year, Adam experienced the following gains and losses from personal casualties. Taken into account the deduction of $100, that's fine, we already took that into account. So we have a loss from asset one, $1,500, a gain of $1,000, and another gain of $3,000. Now, if we net them, if you notice here, we have a gain of 2,500. Well, why would that happen? This would happen if the insurance proceeds were greater than the adjusted basis. So we have a gain, we could have a gain. Once we have a gain, what do we have to do? We, we're going to treat this as capital gains and capital losses. Now this 1,500 loss, we have to look at it as long-term capital loss. This three-month gain, it's gonna be short-term capital gain. And the four, uh, this, this asset three, which is four years, is long-term capital gain. Well, what do we do now? Well, let's net the, the short term together. If we net the short term together, we're going to net, we're going to have 
short term capital loss then we're gonna take the gain 3,000 and we're gonna have left 2,500 long term capital gain simply put we will treat these losses and gains as short term and long term capital gains just like long term and short term capital gains this 2,500 will go with other short term and long term capital gains and losses after we net them out now this is a special situation where we had a gain let's assume on the other hand let's change the 1500 for the sake of illustration to 5000 of a loss on asset one if we go 5000 of a loss what we're left with now is a total loss of a thousand now this 1000 well assuming we are in a federally declared area we can use it okay then we have to compute 10 percent of agi and see if the thousand dollar exceeds that or not um this is what we're gonna have to do okay or what's gonna happen is if it's in a fed if it's not in a federally de declared area we cannot take this deduction between 2018 and 2025 otherwise look at the previous example example two to see how we will treat a net loss in that loss what should you do now to learn more about casualty and theft losses whether you are a cpa candidate an accounting student or an enrolled agent go to farhat lectures and work mcqs study hard good luck and stay safe